Okay. <laughs> I I have only uh, two uh, uh, older men. <laughs> uh, you have? Head? Huh? You have head? You will? Well, okay, yeah. Huh? Okay. Two or <laughs> Yes, it's good. Uh, please, <laughs> please sit down. <laughs> and wear your hat. Wear hat. Wear hat. Tai mao zu bi jiao wen nuan dian. When I was uh, still a monk, I uh, shaved head in winter, very cold, and I have headache. <laughs> wow. <Whoa. laughs> 当和尚的时候是剃度，哇，好冷好冷，还头痛。啊，我不理解了。嗯。Yeah, that's right. I I mark it here, <laughs> so I can continue. We should really thank the past masters, monks, and nuns, and scholars who have. Take time to record the Buddha's teaching after the Master's Nirvana, and also for the past and present persons, lay or monks or nuns who have really dedicated themselves, sacrificed their time and precious health, or under any difficult situation, to translate this, so that I can read it to you. And we have to thank them. And may they be blessed forever by all the Buddhas, past, present, and future. May their merit be immense. May they be liberated forever. Thank you. According to Buddhism and the believer and the tradition, when you read sutra and all that. You have to put on incense, flower, you know, and bow to the sutra first, and thank all the Buddhas and Bodhisattva in ten direction, all respectfully, before you read it, okay? And then you cover the sutra also with silk or you know, beautiful cloth, and I just make it more popular, yeah, more easy, simple. And I apologize to all the Buddha. I say if I done something wrong, according to the. Tradition. My heart is full of respect. It's just that I cannot always do that. So please, all the sin, whatever I've done wrong, is all on me. At least other people they hear the names of the Buddha, according to the Sutta, they will get benefit. Yes. Yesterday we were talking about this uh, a good person when he attained some state of samadhi and. If he thinks he's a sage, then the demon of chronic depression will enter his mind, yeah. And he might take up knives and swords and cut his own body. Terrible. Or he may flee into the wildness, driven by constant anxiety, and be unwilling to see people. And lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Today we continue. Further, Ananda, in this stage of samadhi, the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling of skanda. As he dwells in this purity, his mind is tranquil and at ease. Suddenly, a feeling of boundless joy wells up in him, and there is such bliss in his mind. That he cannot contain it. This is called experiencing lightness and ease, but lacking the wisdom to control it. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon that likes happiness will enter his mind. As soon as he sees someone, he will laugh. He will sing and dance in the streets. It happened, huh? Yeah. He will say that he has already attained 
unobstructed liberation, lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall. Samadhi is a state of, you know, mm, deep meditation. But it can also mean that you're stable, you're very stable in spiritual practice. So if you don't have enough stability when you do meditation, you might have trouble controlling your whatever state of mind that you're in, like too much sadness, too much uh, happiness, too much craziness, too much uh, confidence, etc., etc. He already gone so high and feeling blissful. You would think he is a sage already. No, not yet. And even demon can come in his mind. How kapha? It's very scary. There was a demon of happiness. So be careful. Yeah, I heard about some people like that. They dance on the street and they hug people. And of course, people think they're crazy. And then put off many people to go and learn meditation because of that. Yeah? Mm. That they could possess, you know, possess state. But he's, he's not harming anyone. It's just that he doesn't behave as if he is a, a normal saint. Further, in this state of Samari, yeah, he could be in there and then, but he can go further if he doesn't think that he attained everything yet. And then if he continue with this state, then he can go. The good person sees the, this integration of the form skanda and understands the feeling of skanda. He say he is already satisfied. <laughs> Suddenly a feeling of unreasonable, intense self-satisfaction may arise in him. It may include pride, a righteous pride, maybe arrogant, huh? Haughty pride, overwinning pride, <laughs> Buddha has so many vocabulary, and pride based on inferiority. My God, all of which occur at once. In his mind, he even looks down on the Tathagatas of the Ten Directions. He even don't respect any Buddhas. How much the more so on the lesser positions of Sao hearers and those enlightened by conditions. Sao hearers, Buddha say all the time, Sao hearers, eh? Kuan Yin, eh? This is called viewing oneself as supreme, but lacking the wisdom to save oneself. My God, you can't even save yourself in that stage. If he understands, then there is no error. This experience does not indicate sagehood. But if he considers himself a sage, then a demon of intense arrogance will enter his mind. He will not bow to stupas or in temples. He will destroy sutras and images so extreme. Become fanatic, eh? extremely arrogant. He will say to the dana parties, these are gold, bronze, clay or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. I mean he is very arrogant, eh? disrespecting Buddha's stupa, statues, sutras and all kind of holy things. The flesh body, he is talking now. He is talking to some anything that is not important. He even say these are gold, bronze, clay or wood. The sutras are just leaves or cloth. What he means is the statues or the stupas, I mean the small uh, memorial they make for the Buddhas or the saints. He say these are just gold and or uh, bronze or wood or clay only. There's nothing in it, no meaning anything. Yes, the sutra are just leaves or cloth even. The flesh body is what is real and eternal, but you don't revere it. Instead, you venerate clay and wood. 
That is totally absurd. That's what he said. Absurd. He finished talking. The practitioner opinions are like that. And now the Buddha continue commanding. Those who have deep faith in him will follow him to destroy the images or bury them. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hells. Lacking proper samadhi, he will certainly fall further in this state of samadhi. If he continue in this state of mind, then the good person sees the disintegration of the form skanda and understands the feeling skanda. In his refined understanding, he awakens completely to subtle principles. Everything is in accord with his wishes. Uh, he may suddenly experience limitless lightness and ease in his mind. He may say that he has become a sage and attain great self-mastery. It's possible that we can fall into this kind of trap because these are so powerful and so extremely wonderful. Yeah, this, this kind of state of mind, so blissful, happy, carefree, and, and wise also, somewhat. So we think we already somebody, already Buddha, yeah. This is a problem when, if we don't have a master to guide you or scold you into your right mind, <laughs> subduing your ego by some, some mean, then you become like that. Might not be to the extreme as to destroy the sutras or the Buddha's images, but it could be, you know, very self-aggrandizement kind of a status. In Tibetan Buddhism, sometimes the normal lama or anyone from outside come into the into the monastery, feeling that he is such and such a, a tuku. A, a Rinpoche, a master from uh, Rinpoche, um, teacher of this present Rinpoche, uh, this present abbot, they make a lot of sin and noise. Yes. And then one of the person who wrote this kind of story, she said that if such a practitioner are not lucky enough to be near a good friend like other lamas or his teacher who will subdue his ego by scolding him in front of everybody, degrading him, make him <laughs> become <laughs> zero to the ego again. Then he will continue to become misled like that until he gone insane. Then he will be very sad, he cry, he laugh because nobody think, nobody believe that he's a He's uh, too cool, you know, I mean, the living Buddha. Uh, nobody believe him that he's a former teacher of this present Rinpoche, and he expect this Rinpoche in the temple to bow to him, recognize him, uh, be grateful to him, and respect him, and worship him, all that kind of thing. Some people fall into that state also. And it's some true story like that in some Buddhist monastery. Yes. Then. Sometimes the master would ignore him or try to do something to cure him immediately or as soon as possible. But if you meditate alone, you don't have any good friend like that, you know, to check you out, to straighten you up, then you'll be in trouble. That's why meditating is also very uh, important that you must have a guide, yes, a good guide, who are not afraid to offend you. Hmm? That would be better to, for your safety yeah, and your spiritual progress. It might hurt the ego, but what is ego anyway? It doesn't matter, he won't die. <laughs> if you hurt the ego, it doesn't hurt anything. It just makes you better only, right? <laughs> it's better than uh, continue to be insane or lose your spiritual merit or lose your wisdom, lose your uh, future a spiritual attainment or progress. Yeah? Because the Buddha mentioned before, those and those kind of person even cut off the seat of future enlightenment even, cut off his body seat. It's very scary, yeah? That's why formerly 
not many masters would take up a lot of disciples. Yeah. Even Bodhidharma, he didn't want to talk to no one a lot. He know he's all deaf anyway. <laughs> Just attaching to rope or uh, whatever rules and regulation, and not really understand the meaning of meditation. So he just went to a cave and meditated for nine years. And finally, some disciple, truly a handful of them, four or five of them came and seek him out, and he really teach them. But even among the five of them, only one really understood the essence of it. The other four, he said, oh, you are just like, you, you get my skin, <laughs> meaning outside of me, uh, you get my hair or whatever. He meant just not yet inside. Just outward only, outside only. Only one, Huika, he's the one who attained what the Master tried to teach him. And then after that, Bodhidharma left, go back to, to India. Yeah. They said he's sick and died, so they bury him. But when they open the coffin, there's nobody there, only one shoe. <laughs> one shoe left. And the other one outside somewhere saw, saw him with one shoe on his uh, staff. <laughs> the one shoe in the coffin and one shoe he take with him. <laughs> Just to let people know that he's still alive or resurrected, that's all. Same with Kabir. Huh? The Muslim and the Hindu, they fight with each other who should take his body because um, he's the master of whom, you know, he has both Hindu uh, follower as well as Muslim follower. So both of them fighting, wanting to take his body. And when they open the coffin, there's only two roses in it. <laughs> one for Muslim, maybe one for Hindu. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> he's not there anymore. <laughs> yeah, some master can take their body with them, or resurrect it with the body or without the body. Yeah. It is said that Jesus resurrected. Yeah. And then later he went to Kashmir continue his practice with some small circle of disciples. I visited his uh, so-called tomb. Eh? Yeah. You have to pay, no? <laughs> I had to pay some money to, <laughs> to go inside. Yeah. yeah, they come and tell you outright, money, <laughs> box. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, of course, they need it maybe just to take care of the tomb, you know, some caretaker, and they need to leave of it, no? I had to pay. I don't have that much money, but she told me to pay, so I paid. <laughs> I go inside, have a look. And nothing much, just the tomb and the name. No tomb even, you don't see. It's just supposed to be there. Suppose he lived until 120 years old yeah, in Kashmir. So maybe he resurrected and taken his body with him as well, like a beer or Bodhidharma. Huh? All right. Good translation? Yeah, wonderful. Oh, I'm so happy. At least the Chinese, you know, very difficult for them to come here. You know, not all of them have a lot of money. China is big, you know. Not every Chinese city near Taiwan. Sometimes they have to go maybe with ox cart or something and get the bus and get the train and then get the airplane. It's very difficult. Some take two, three, four, five days to get to Taiwan from their own home. All right, that's another one. Okay, here, here it is. You see sound here. Even the person who meditate in this kind, maybe another kind of meditation, when he reached this state of self-satisfaction, intense self-satisfaction, not just normal, then he becomes so happy, you know, so arrogant. He even looked down upon those Guan Yin practitioners, the sound hearers, and those ahas that have been enlightened by conditions, or meaning those beings who enlightened by themselves, by some certain conditions, just like other disciples of the Buddha, enlightened by touch or by the sound of the Buddha, uh, hearing the voice of the Buddha or by uh, the fragrance of something, yeah? Like, for example, like that. Just because they have probably been practicing many lifetimes already, so right now just some simple condition, they get enlightened. Huh? And then uh, uh, also there are some called Patekya Buddha, meaning the, the one who meditate all by themselves, yeah? And then by some 
uh, married from the past life or maybe seen one master by chance and then became enlightened also. So these people are not necessarily disciples of Buddha, yeah? Okay. So, but the person who reached this state of extreme self-satisfaction, he thinks he's above everything. But this is just one state, which is called viewing oneself as supreme, but lacking wisdom to save oneself even. You can't even save yourself. <laughs> Not to talk about go out and save other souls. This is terrible, no? Nah? Then you're falling. If he knows it, then it's okay. But if he doesn't know, then he will fall. The demons and all that will come. You see this kind of so-called enlightened person? He can't even save himself, but he has followers. <laughs> the Buddha says those who have deep faith in him will follow him to, to destroy the images or bury them, you know, destroy the Buddha statues and all that. He will mislead living beings so that they fall into the relentless hell. Bad one. Like in proper Samadhi, he fall. He fall, okay, one person might be okay. But because he's misleading others as well, that is a problem. So to choose a master is, is also a very difficult task, not to talk about uh, uh, being enlightened or become a master oneself, eh? Oh, poor beings, I'm sorry, I'm telling you. Living in this world is, is like in a jungle, in a maze or something, you can never know. You don't even know who is your master even. You don't even know who is what. Yeah? How can you even know who is a master even? Yeah? This kind of person who attained this kind of samadhi already can talk, have eloquence. Yeah? Convince people, especially those who have no, no idea about meditation or dharma or anything. Of course, they will be more in trouble. And not just following him, but even fall into hell. This is really tragic. If you blindly follow him, it's not your fault. How come you even have to go to hell? What law is this? I want to tell you, I'm very angry sometimes with the so-called rules in this world and the Maya and all that. That's why I work day and night, because I cannot bear all this kind of injustice and pain that, that measure upon all beings, the animals, the humans, anyone, any alike. No one escapes. No one, they, they would even relent. Yeah, the animals, what can they do? Or even human, what can they do? Huh? They heard that, okay, God is great, Buddha is great. They want to follow. They want to learn. They want to, to be enlightened. Huh? They want to get out of suffering. What have they done wrong? But you are not me. You cannot understand my pain. My pain in the heart. Because what have they done? What have the people done? Even if they follow the wrong teacher and wrong view, what have they done? They no harm nobody. If they go on the street and say, oh, I'm great, I'm great, because they, they misunderstand their greatness, they misunderstand their spiritual value. What have they done to anybody? You got that? You understand my anger, my, my pain? When they talk nonsense and they apply this kind of cruelty on anybody, I mean, really, it's on anyone. Nambokta Imagine. Hell is it not fun. Huh? And relentless hell even. Just because of wrong view. My God. I see only pain. That is unjustified pain and suffering for the innocent. If somebody kills somebody, okay, maybe you go to hell, fine. It's just uh, stupid. Follow the wrong view. And this man, he has no proper guidance teacher, so he fall in the wrong state of attainment. That's all. And go to hell. And Buddha won't tell lie. You know what I'm saying? Just put them into hell just like that. Huh? Wouldn't you be angry? Oh, yeah. If it's your children, oh, yeah. you would do more than that. For me, these helpless people are like children. Understand me? Because they don't know anything. They just like children, easily being cheated, seduced, 
misled, yeah? So it's like those innocent teenage outside, the drug people use their innocence to, to, to seduce them into bad habit, and then they become bad because they have no money to buy drugs, then they go steal, they go do this and that, and then they become criminal, just like that. Hmm? No matter if the Maya right or wrong, it's all wrong. It's all wrong to punish people for the things that they don't know what they're doing. Yeah, That's why Jesus forgives those who crucify Him, because please, Father, they don't know what they're doing. Truly, they don't know what they're doing. Even animals feeling sorry for humans when they're killing them. They're going to kill them. They, they cry, not for them, but they feel, they feel sorry for the humans because they don't know what they're doing. They will get a lot more punishment than, than the animal just get. See, the animal just being killed and dying, however brutal, but die. But they don't know, the humans who kill them don't know, they go to, to hell for I don't know how long and being punished and being tortured forever. You know, like the story I told you about the, the man who killed chicken to make soup and, and sell? Yeah. Lucky Kwan Yin Bodhisattva interfere, otherwise he would continue being, you know, in hell forever. Not just swallow some hot coal and then being free and, and giving another chance again. You see that? That was a true story, no? But then, how many people would believe him? and quit their crude way of life. Not too many. You can see that. You can see. How many people in Vietnam would read this story and, and even believe it? Huh? Oh man, there's endless, endless suffering in this world.